X-Men The Last Stand was directed by Brett Ratner, not Brian Singer. Brian Singer backed out of this film to do Superman Returns, which I think we all can agree was a colossal mistake. In fact, Brian Singer has even said that publicly, that he wished he hadn't done that. And he even tried to redo things that this film did with Days of Future Past to help fix the continuity errors that this film brought upon the entire X-Men series. Now, do I hate X-Men The Last Stand? No. I actually really enjoy the first half of The Last Stand. We'll talk about some of the pros and some of the cons. When Brett Ratner took this project, he had very little time. And the fact that this film is as good as it is and not quite as terrible as it could have been is actually rather commendable. The movie opens with a danger room sequence and it was really cool to finally see the danger room in use at Xavier School. But this scene is a good indication of my biggest issue with the entire film. And this is a very action heavy scene and it's very fun and it's exciting, but there's nothing at stake. It doesn't feel like there's any urgency. The first two X-Men films felt almost like dramas that contained amazing action sequences. You felt for the characters. You understood the world. It was about persecution and discrimination, about being different and how to be accepted in humanity when you are different. X-Men The Last Stand sort of throws all that away and it's an action movie. The action sequences are very well helmed, there's a lot of really impressive special effects, and it's overall a fun, exciting, summer popcorn movie that you can watch and be entertained by. But it took the dramatic heights that were reached in the first two films and kind of threw them out the door for a bunch of impressive set pieces. And that was disappointing. There are still some things you can glean from this movie though in regards to a dramatic heft. There are some good character moments, like in the beginning when Logan is getting scolded by Storm for not doing a very good job of being a teacher in the danger room and kind of taking things on his own, he says, hey, I'm just a sub, talk to Scott, he didn't show up. And you're like, Wolverine is a substitute teacher, that's, that's just interesting to me. Could you imagine being in school and like your teacher's gone for the day and in walks Wolverine? I mean, that would be the best day of school ever. There's also a great moment between Scott and Logan when they're both talking about how they have to move on from Jean Grey dying, and Scott goes, hey, not everybody heals as fast as you, Logan, and walks away. That's a great line. Whenever you can take our character's larger-than-life superhero -y stuff and bring it down to Earth and have it relate to their human emotion, or in this case, mutant emotion. It makes the characters more relatable, not just people in spandex and superhero suits. Also, Storm is given a lot more to do in this film, which was nice to see. Kelsey Grammer as the Beast is an inspired choice. That is a fantastic casting decision. I love him as this character. I would have never, ever thought that. And the fact that they went for that and it worked as well as it did, that's commendable. And that's one of the things about the X-Men franchise as a whole that I love is the casting choices. Because when you look back on these films, it's tough to imagine any other actor inhabiting these characters. And this film does set up a very interesting and complex dilemma. Humans have discovered a cure for the mutant gene. Do you take it or do you not? Now for some, it's appalling. But for others like Rogue, who can't touch someone without essentially killing them, that's a kind of attractive prospect. So are you for or against the cure? That aspect of this movie I think is very compelling. There's also a great scene that comes from Logan and Rogue having a conversation where Rogue is going off to get the cure and Logan's like, hey, I'm not your father, I'm your friend. Do what you gotta do. If you wanna do it, do it. Just do it for yourself, not for some boy. There's a lot of character moments like that in the first half of The Last Stand that I really like, and it's one of the reasons I do own the Blu-ray. I love Magneto just turning his back on Mystique when she gets the cure by accident. He's just like, oh, you're not one of us anymore, and walks away. But what this film explores the most is what was only hinted at in the first two X-Men's, and that is Jean Grey becoming the Phoenix. And we get to see the rise of the Dark Phoenix when she is essentially the worst kind of bipolar you could be. <laughs> because when you're on your really bad side, you can possibly destroy the entire Earth. There's some really great sequences here, and I like Famke Jensen quite a bit in this role. I think she's a fairly underrated actress, and I really like what she brings to this character. And there's an amazing scene where Professor X gives up his life, and Magneto has to sit there and watch. And there's moments where Magneto sits back in this movie and realizes what he's done. And it's kind of heartbreaking for his character. But here's what I have to say. I can't attribute too much of that emotion to The Last Stand, this film. 
I have to attribute it to the fact that the first two films that preceded it were so good. My best way of describing this is imagine you love a TV show. It's like one of your favorite shows. You're all built up in the characters. You really like everybody. You're excited. You can't wait to watch it every week or maybe you binge it on Netflix. You get to season five and you're loving it. You're loving every minute. And there's one episode that comes along that's kind of crappy. It's not the greatest episode, but you can kind of watch it. And you feel semi-invested in this episode and in the characters because of all of the other good content that's come before it. And that's kind of how I feel about The Last Stand. The first two films are so good and they got me so into these characters that this film is really benefited from that. This film has the first two films to thank for the fact that I care even remotely because this film doesn't do much to set up these characters in an entertaining way beyond some action set pieces. I like the first two so much and so I kind of carry over that emotion and character development into this film a little bit. So let's get into some of the negatives beyond what I've already talked about, the fact that this is just a big action movie and sort of throws out a lot of the personal drama. I think the rogue and Kitty pride jealousy over Iceman is completely unnecessary. It's an entire backstory to this film that I don't think has to be there. I do like Iceman finally standing up to Pyro. That sequence is awesome. But I think that entire love triangle was just completely unnecessary and really took us nowhere in this film. Let's talk about the Juggernaut. So, uh, I don't know. I, I, I uh. I don't like him. <laughs> I don't like him in this movie. I'm the juggernaut, bitch. It's like, thanks, man. Will you shut the fuck up and get off this screen? <laughs> As the movie transitions into an all-out action film and we finally get the big war that we've all been hearing about for the first two films, Magneto essentially turns into a pun machine. Charles always wanted to build bridges. In chess, the pawns go first. He turned from a fairly complex character into this action movie guy who says witty things and winks at the camera. It was a total betrayal of everything that we've seen of Magneto in the first two films. Although, there is a fantastic line delivered by Wolverine in this sequence. <laughs> Grow those back. It's like I said, there are tiny morsels of goodness throughout this movie that you can latch onto, like Wolverine having to kill Jean. It's very sad, you feel for him. He's the only guy who can walk up to her, and for whatever reason though, she chooses not to use her telekinesis to make him fly back. I mean, she does that to him earlier in the movie. I get that he's resisting her body disintegrating powers at this time, but she could just use telekinesis to push him back like she did earlier, but I guess she doesn't want to. There's part of her that sort of seems like she wants to be killed. In fact, she asks him twice in this movie, for him to kill her, and so I can kind of forgive that, but it's also a bit of a nitpick. The first half is okay. It was actually semi-watchable, and I enjoyed it. The last half turns into a big action movie extravaganza where it forgets what the series is really about, and then the end credit scenes are like, hey, remember how we had all these really dramatic moments? Yeah, fuck it. Yeah, uh, Magneto's gotta get his powers back, and, and Charles Xavier is in some body somewhere and it's his voice and apparently it's like his twin brother. The series after this has essentially completely ignored whatever the fuck happened at the end of this movie with Xavier. He shows up in the end credit sequence of The Wolverine and is like, you're not the only one with gifts. And I'm like, what the hell's going on? Just, if you're gonna kill him, kill him. Don't have him be some twin brother that he can inhabit. That's just... That is the biggest bullshit thing they could have done with these characters. They had a sad death, and the end credit scene is like, hey, nope, sorry. That's not how it is, actually. He's, he's in his twin brother's body or some shit. And the only way I know that is because I've looked into it online. The films have completely disregarded this incredible continuity error. In fact, the X-Men series as a whole has some serious continuity issues, and one of them is a time travel movie. <laughs> so yeah. The Last Stand, as I said, I do not hate. I like the first half. The last half, to me, really betrayed everything the first half did, as well as the first two films. I'm gonna give X-Men The Last Stand a C+. Guys, thank you so much as always for watching. Look forward to my review of X-Men Origins Wolverine with my buddy The Flick Pick. He joined me filming that and I can't wait to do that leading up to Logan. You guys are the best. Thank you once again. And if you like this, you can click right here and get stuck -manized.